motion to order, and I'd like to have a motion to adjourn from executive session. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, if you would like to, you may join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. I would like a motion to approve the agenda for tonight. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion uh, to approve the agenda, but to strike um, 3A, presentation by the Mental Health and Beha Behavioral Health Grant, and substitute it with appointments to boards and commissions. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, so we will go directly to that. Um, for the record, Tyler Walsh asked that his report be uh, withdrawn until the next meeting. So we'll have that at a later meeting. We have a vacancy on the Oxford Parking and Transportation Board. So I would uh, nominate that we appoint um, Richard Rick Bailey to the Oxford Parking and Transportation Advisory Board. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded. Are there any other ap uh, appointments, um, nominees? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Rick Bailey will be on OPTAB. Our next is one of the highlights of the year for most co of council, I think, and that is the swearing in of our new officers. And I recognize Chief Jones to lead us through this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. I have the pleasure tonight of uh, um, helping swear in our two newest police officers. Uh, these fine young men began the process back in April of 2022. Um, that's when they took the written exam and the physical fitness test. Uh, after several interviews and an intensive background investigation and several other pre-employment tests, uh, they were hired in July and sent off to the Butler Tech Police Academy where uh, they recently finished the academy. They passed their state tests and they're very eager to get started on their field training this week. Um, so they're about to undergo a rigorous 16 week field training program that uh, Oxford officers who are trained as field training officers or FTOs as we call them. Uh, and then they're then eventually after that, they'll be released to solo patrol. So I'm gonna ask Grant Combs and Brandon Weaver to come forward. You guys stand over here and then uh, Assistant Law Director uh, Ben Mazur is going to administer their oath. support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and of the state of Ohio, and of the state of Ohio, and will obey the laws thereof, and will obey the laws thereof, and that I will, in all respects, and that I will, in all respects, uphold and enforce the provisions of the Charter, uphold and enforce the provisions of the Charter, and the ordinances of the City of Oxford, and the ordinances of the City of Oxford, and will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of police officer and will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of the police officer upon which I'm about to enter upon which I'm about to enter I pledge to enforce the laws of the city of Oxford I pledge to enforce the laws of the city of Oxford and of the state of Ohio and of the state of Ohio impartially and with integrity impartially and with integrity never using my authority for personal or private motives never using my authority for personal or private motives, but applying the law fairly and equally to all persons, but applying the law fairly and equally to all persons, solely in the interest of the public peace, safety, and welfare, solely in the interest of the public peace, safety, and welfare, and I further pledge to so conduct myself, and I further pledge to so conduct myself, 
has to bring credit to the police division of the city of Oxford at all times. Has to bring credit to the police division of the city of Oxford at all times. After me, I, Brandon C. Weaver, I, Brandon C. Weaver, <laughs> solemnly swear or affirm, solemnly swear or affirm, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and of the state of Ohio, and of the state of Ohio, and will obey the laws thereof, and will obey the laws thereof, and that I will, in all respects, and that I will, in all respects, Uphold and enforce the provisions of the charter. Uphold and enforce the provisions of the charter. And the ordinances of the city of Oxford. And the ordinances of the city of Oxford. And will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of police officer. And will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of the police officer. Upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. I pledge to enforce the laws of the city of Oxford. I pledge to enforce the laws of the city of Oxford. And of the state of Ohio, and of the state of Ohio, impartially and with an integrity, impartially and, in, and with integrity, never using my authority for personal or private motives, never using my authority for personal or private motives, but applying the law fairly and equally to all persons, but applying the law fairly and equally to all persons, solely in the interest of the public peace, safety, and welfare solely in the interest of the public peace, safety, and welfare. And I further pledge to so conduct myself, and I further pledge to so conduct myself, as to bring credit to the police division of the city of Oxford at all times. As to bring credit to the police division of the city of Oxford at all times. Okay, congratulations. <laughs> So uh, we're gonna we take these oaths very seriously, and uh, and as, as they do as well. And uh, I'll introduce you uh, to them a little bit uh, more individually. Uh, Grant, if you'll come up. Um, Grant Grant here is uh, originally from Stowe, Ohio. He uh, he received about a week's notice that the academy was starting, and he was getting hired. So then he scrambled to find an apartment uh, down here, and he landed in Hamilton. Uh, he, uh, he was attending the University of Dayton when he received the job offer. Uh, while in college and high school, he worked a variety of jobs to include a residence life desk assistant, a poly packing plant, a security guard. Probably the most interesting during his interview was he worked for a canoe liver, uh, livery, right? Yeah, and uh, so he told us a lot of stories from that. He also helped form the University of Dayton Boxing Club and he excelled uh, at fit physical fitness at the academy. So Grant's going to end up wearing badge uh, 40, and I'm going to pin his badge tonight. So let me set that down here. I'll try not to stand in the way. <laughs> Don't stand in the way, Grant. Congratulations, Grant. Brandon, as you can see, uh, well, as you can see, we have uh, our whole a lot of OPD family here for both of them. But Brandon brought his family. He's a little closer. He's from Preble County, up in the Eaton area. He uh, graduated from Eaton High School. He studied uh, criminal justice at Indiana University East and received his bachelor's degree. He did this uh, impressively while working full time at Walmart, and uh, he worked uh, for that company for about five years. And he progressively moved up through the ranks there and uh, moved on to busier stores. He spent much of his time working as an asset protection associate and then an asset protection assistant store manager. Um, uh, so he interfaced a lot with the local police departments uh, in that job. And, uh, and then he became an overnight coach at a busy store in the Dayton area. He gained valuable experience at human resources. So um, we look forward to the, the skills and, that they can all bring. Uh, Brandon's recently married. He resides in the New Lebanon area with his wife. And I'm going to ask his uh, wife, Kirsten, to come up to pin his badge. 
He's going to wear badge 51. Thank council uh, for allowing us the time to, to do this ceremony. We look forward to, um, you know, we don't have a lot of turnover in police officers, so we look forward to hopefully a long career for both of these gentlemen. I know they're eager to get out and work in the road. And uh, I, I should offer, do you guys have anything? What, do you want to say anything? Okay. <laughs> I should have warned you about that. But, uh, anyway, I, I appreciate it. I'm going to step out and uh, we're going to complete their paperwork out there. So. If any family members want to leave, this would be a good time to do so. Thank Super. You. Thank you very Thank much. You. Congratulations, you. gentlemen, and welcome to Oxford. <laughs> We're going to pause just a moment while, while the bulk of the audience leaves. But we're thankful for all of you who remain. Okay, at this time, uh, anyone address, wishing to address council about items that are not on this evening's agenda, or if they are on the consent agenda, you can come forward at this time, state your name and address for the record. We'll give you five minutes, and there's little lights to tell you that you're getting close to five minutes. I like that innovation. Okay, hearing none, we will move to the consent agenda. I would entertain a motion to approve it. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any items that need to be removed and discussed? Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. We'll move next to resolutions. You can read the first one. A resolution authorizing the city manager to accept the Ohio Violent Crime Reduction Grant in an amount not to exceed $218,376.33. Okay, is there a motion to adopt this resolution? So, so moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Do you want to take yeah, this? Yeah, I'll handle it. Uh, okay. So basically, uh, the city applied for a grant. Uh, it was the federal cops hiring grant as an Ohio Office of Criminal Justice Services grant related to staffing. We did not receive funding for the COPS grant, but we did receive funding for the 10th round of the Ohio Violent Crime Reduction Grants. Uh, we were awarded $218,376.33 uh, to supplement staffing to prevent and investigate violent crime. So this application then is based on the hiring of additional police officer uh, to backfill a vacancy uh, of assigning a current officer to the burn task force which is the Butler undercover regional narcotics task force that's hosted by the Butler County Sheriff's Office and as the report states oh he's back <laughs> yeah sorry <laughs> take over. go ahead JJ. no I think you've completed it uh, but but uh, basically this this grant that uh, we uh, received would allow us to add another police position to backfill sending someone to that task force to do some proactive uh, drug enforcement work uh, that would hopefully prevent uh, over drug overdoses and reduce the drug related crime in Oxford. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone from the public who'd like to address this resolution? Seeing none, council have any questions or comments? Thanks for applying for the grant and yep. just being so good at it. Getting yeah. Congratulations. Absolutely. Yeah. All those in favor of the resolution indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. We'll move to resolution number two. A resolution authorizing the city manager to submit a grant application to the Ohio Department of Transportation to improve roadway and pedestrian safety. Okay. Is there a motion to adopt this resolution? So moved. It's been moved. 
Second. And seconded, thank you. And we have Mike here to tell us all about it. All right, good evening, Mayor Snavely, members of council. Uh, ODOT has announced the uh, safety award program of which I think the city will score highly and be eligible for funding. So council has a policy of uh, grant applications over $50,000 to get approval, uh, mainly so that you're aware of uh, required matches that go with the grant. Uh, this is a, a, a very good grant. It only has a 10% local match. And our focus, uh, at least preliminarily, will be on uh, sidewalk safety, uh, predominantly with gap filling, where we have missing segments of sidewalks, such as at the Duke Substation and the Goodwill Retail Center. Uh, so our engineering division is uh, looking at possible projects and trying to see where we would score the best, and we're asking your permission to submit an application for up to $150,000, and our local match would be $15,000. Okay, glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Is there anyone from the public who'd like to address this resolution? I do have one question. Along the Locust Street where that sidewalk would go, there's a very deep ditch. Would that be filled in as part of this? Yes, we would size that with the proper size culvert and then uh, there would be level grade with the sidewalk on top. Good, I think that would improve safety in multiple ways. Yes. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Have you looked at Kerr Road going south? Uh, that's a, uh, that will be a, uh, a very difficult challenge and a very expensive challenge to, uh, to put sidewalk on that road. Uh, I, I agree. I was just curious if you looked into it. Sounds like you have. Uh, that's that's going to take some long-range planning to, to achieve something there. We've we've been battling uh, stream bank erosion there, which uh, further complicates uh, doing something there. But uh, we appreciate your comments on it. Thanks, Glenn. Everybody ready to vote? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank Resolution you. is adopted. We'll move to number three. A resolution redirecting the expenditure of up to $72,000 of American Rescue Plan Act funds, which shall be used to provide staff bonuses for service during the coronavirus pandemic. Is there a motion to adopt? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Thank you very much. Jessica, welcome. Good evening. Thank you. The city of Oxford had 158 year-round staff employees who worked during the coronavirus pandemic from March 2020 to March of 2022 who are still with us. These individuals came to work in person and maintained the operations of the city throughout that entire time. They st they, these individuals worked delivering public safety services, water and wastewater operations, streets and grounds maintenance, as well as administrative functions. We did provide grants to many local businesses to help them with their operations and staff retention. As a public sector employer, there's often limits to what we can do financially to recognize the efforts of our staff community. However, the American Rescue Plan Fund does allow for staff incentives for work performed during the pandemic. As we end the year 2022, I believe we now understand that we will have the long lasting impacts of the coronavirus and we're gonna be feeling this for into the future. Our staff showed up every day, kept the city running, and we value their commitment. The city has experienced a decrease in the applicant pools when we post open positions, and we understand the need to support and retain the valuable staff that we do have. As an employee retention strategy, we'd like to recognize the efforts of our staff with a bonus for service during the coronavirus pandemic. The criteria to receive this bonus will be as follows full-time and year-round part-time employees who served between March 18th, 2020 and March 31st, 2022, who are still with the City of Oxford. Full-time employees will receive a $500 bonus and part-time employees will receive a $250 bonus. The staff covered under the fire contract will be exempt from this bonus. They were provided a longevity bonus that is not in the contract, so we'll credit that with this bonus. And I'm happy to answer any questions if you have. Is there anyone from the public who would like to address this resolution? Councilors? Well, just thanks uh, to all staff who did, I mean, it, it didn't have the luxury 
of, of, of not showing up, and so um, I think people appreciated that. And I think in retrospect, it's we, 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 it was it was a risky time so that being exposed people presented risks, particularly before we had a vaccine. And so to come to work was took a certain amount of value. Well, I know that I'm very much in favor of this. I think that uh, we are blessed to have one of the best city staffs, top to bottom, uh, of any community. And uh, I just feel real proud of all of them. I told them that at their year-end dinner, and I meant every word of it. And I think that this is an appropriate expenditure. Any other comments or questions? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Now we will move to ordinances. When you're ready. An ordinance by Oxford City Council authorizing the city manager to take all necessary action, including but not limited to the negotiation and execution of a contract to purchase the real estate located at 100 South Elm Street and 102 South Elm Street, oh sorry, yeah, at a cost of $600,000 for all parcels and to utilize American Rescue Plan Act funds in making the purchase. Okay, um, because this is first reading, we don't have motions, so we will turn to Jessica to lead us through this. Good evening once again. Um, the Oxford City Council has identified economic development as one of your top three priority goal areas. The American Rescue Plan funds have an allowable use of economic recovery from the pandemic. We have been researching techniques and strategies to lead economic development in our community, and the acquisition of property and site development are leading strategies that many communities use. The city has also been collaborating with Miami University on the development of the College at Elm, an innovation and workforce development center. It's the goal of the College of Elm to bring new high quality jobs to Oxford and spur economic growth. The draft comprehensive plan has identified the Elm Street corridor as an area that is poised for redevelopment. The availability of these two properties immediately adjacent to the College of Elm is an opportunity to encourage future economic growth in this region. It is zoned general business and has the potential to provide both economic growth and possible housing in the future. Staff plan to work with the Community Improvement Corporation to develop a redevelopment plan for the Elm Street corridor that will lead to economic growth for our community. So I will say that um, we're excited about this opportunity. Um, we've been eyeing Elm Street in general for a while, and then when these two properties became available, we were like, oh. And, and never before have we really been active in site acquisition and development. So it feels like a, a new frontier for us, um, but the availability of the American Rescue Plan funds makes this an opportunity that we haven't had in the past. So that's here is a picture of it's, it is immediately, there's the two houses that are immediately adjacent to College of Elm. Um, you can see there the dark square shows you the parcels. Um, and so we don't, I'll be honest, we do not have any concrete plans for the redevelopment of this area at this time, but it did feel like an opportunity before us to plant a seed, uh, knowing that we want to redevelop this corridor. And as we're learning, um, if you want control over an area, um, ownership is, is half the battle. So um, I'm happy to answer any other questions if you have. Okay. So um, when, what, you, you, talking from the um, comprehensive plan and what staff's vision of what redevelopment means for this corridor in your initial thoughts? I think if I can go out on a limb and look at the design charrettes that were conducted a few years ago, there were some really bright new ideas of um, some mixed use development there or some housing back <laughs> along um, the railway if you go deep onto that site. And so it is something that we would have to do over time and acquire definitely more land to see that vision come to reality. But I think that's a good starting point in our vision would and be those for, design charrettes. So and, and you know, the general caveat around this, redevelopment can mean demolition and construction. It can also mean adaptive reuse. And right now, what's the initial thinking about you know, the future of these structures? <clears throat> I don't have anything, I really don't. I really would like to kind of wait and see what what other land we can possibly get and then what a whole comprehensive look at that area would be. So it's too early for me to answer that question. And am 
might add too that we have some time because these properties are leased the fall, upcoming school year. So, you know, we have spring semester for this year and then fall and spring for next year. So we do have some time oh. to think about that and discuss. Yeah, there's no so immediate action rent required. Rent they're rented the for year. all of next year. Mm -hmm. Informative. Any other questions or comments? Does anyone from the public wish to address this? Yeah. <coughs> Just uh, give us your name. Hi, I'm, you I'm Michael Conger. I'm a uh, associate professor of entrepreneurship at the Farmer School of Business. Uh, also a resident of Oxford since August of 2015. Uh, and thank you, Mayor Smedley and the council for allowing me to speak. Uh, I this is new information for me, but I uh, am very interested in uh, this kind of effort from council. Uh, my research and uh, practice, including working with students, doing research, consulting, working with businesses and nonprofits, is focused on uh, entrepreneurship and the creation of both economic wealth and civic and social wealth. And so I care about trying to find solutions where all of those things can happen. Uh, what my research and the research of many of my colleagues show is that these kinds of efforts uh, require a great deal of, of careful thought, and I really appreciate the comments, the questions that have come up asking about those details. I strongly encourage the council to look deeply into those things, but these sort of uh, initiatives in principle, uh, assuming that due diligence is, is done correctly and responsibly, uh, are in my professional view, very smart to do. Uh, this kind of approach to not just create uh, economic development in a community, but also to try to create what several of my colleagues would call civic wealth, uh, which is the creation of all of those kinds of benefits focused on a community. The things that are most important, and I won't take too much time, uh, even though I'm a professor, but uh, the, the focus <laughs> of those things really is, is bringing together a, uh, a focus on creating space for enterprising individuals. Uh, it's probably unsurprising as an entrepreneurship professor that I think that's an important piece of it. But other key pieces of that are, are regimes of support, which includes uh, public policy, uh, sometimes public investment, uh, philanthropic investment, uh, other kinds of support that is coming to drive development, both economic and uh, communal and social. Uh, and the, the last thing is a focus of uh, treating the community itself as the locus of action, right? So this drive to, uh, which I think maybe a lot of us feel innately, like we, we wanna focus on making our community better. That's actually a smart economic thing to do. That's a smart business thing to do, and that's smart policy in my view. So I just wanna encourage the council to strongly consider uh, this proposal and others like it. Uh, I think it's a very smart way to spend your resources to consider ways you can, uh, to, to put it bluntly, put your thumb on the scale to try to shape the future of our community uh, to be the kind of place that we want Oxford to be. Uh, and so I just wanted to advocate for, uh, I, I really appreciate the work of the city management office. Uh, and I've had the pleasure of uh, working with several people in this room uh, on a lot of the work that I've been doing, including uh, Chief Jones and council, council people, persons, uh, Bracken and French, among others. So uh, a lot of respect for the people in this room and uh, that's all I have to say. But I hope that Thank you'll you. consider this and uh, this line of policy. I think it's it's well advised. Super. Thank you. Thank you very much. Would anyone else like to address this ordinance? Um, commentary, opinions? Well, I, I would say that I'm really happy that we're uh, making this investment. And I think that this is really a strategic corridor. I think the potential of this corridor we've seen with the community uh, art center on one side and college at an elm surrounding by this public space, it's really a gem and it's gonna be a kind of uh, a central place for cool things to happen. Um, 
I would say, however, that um, what I'm hoping is is what happens with this is is kind of follows the model what happened with College at Elm. I mean, what came before us was a proposal to years ago to demolish basically that whole block, including these structures, um, for for a, a, and then part I think it was not the desire to redes rezone because the idea of student housing was not something we went there. But I think there was strong community sentiment that the idea that there was historical fabric and texture on Elm Street, that losing it would be a loss. And, and so I think that helped Miami rethink like, oh, what can we do with this, with this culinary support building? And what we have now is innovation in the adaptive reuse of a structure that has, it's not historic, but it, it contributed to the, to the street wall. So I'm totally excited about the, the acquisition of these properties. Um, but I, but if I, I hope that it's with the purpose or with the leading intent of adaptive reuse. Uh, if I feel like this is the, the assumption is this problem for redevelopment or the structures will have to go, I'm less comfortable with it. Um, but I think if we, if we, if Miami could be creative with the College at Elm building and its constraints, I hope we can be creative in thinking about how to adaptively reuse these structures. Um, so yeah, I, I like I think we'll have to go through a process to think about it, but. Um, the intention is demolition. I'm not sure I want to be party to it, um, but if it's if it's part of an adaptive reuse that brings new uses while preserving the historical fabric, then I think it's a win-win. So, okay. Anyone else? So I agree with you, Dave. Uh, adaptive reuse is something I would love to see, but I think we covered most of the local focus of it. You know, I, I would love to see those things be co-locators. Uh, they, they're perfect structures to do some co-location, especially if there's construction projects or, or light industrial going on in the College at Elm. Instead of having a trailer sitting out there that they normally have on construction sites, we'd have two really nice houses that are right there that they could do mission control for. But that's just simply one use that any of those, are, but that both of those houses could provide. But what I see is the first step of the town focusing on actively controlling our space and what we can do with it and the potential to what we can do with it. So with your concern saying, you know, I'm worried about demolition, you know, as long as the, re the subsequent councils are firmly in support of maintaining the character of that particular block, then I'm guessing the city will abide by that and move forward and, and you know, this is, in my opinion, the the one that we're going to be voting on in our second reading, as well as this one is one step on the residential side, one step on the economic development side. Using real estate to do that is a powerful signal, and I really appreciate all the efforts that the city staff has gone through to make that happen, because I think it's a great step in the right direction. Yeah, I want to just echo what uh, both Councillor Prickridge and Councillor Ellerby have said. Uh, I'll also add that, you know, when I look at places like Hamilton and I think, wow, they're doing such cool stuff, how are they able to do it? What I hear is they own these buildings, they own this property. And so I think this is exciting and it's forward looking. And there's a domino effect with this as well, because when we think about public art, right, and, you know, what are the surfaces we can use to have murals, right? If there's property that the city already owns, then the barrier to being able to have public art um, is lower. And so um, I think there are just a lot of ways that this can bring a lot of joy to the community. Um, I love adaptive reuse as well, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing what comes next. So thank you for all your hard work on this to staff. Yeah, I think there is a, a consensus on council that this is a good idea. Um, I think it is Definitely one of our top goals is economic development, and this does it. I would point out that on Elm Street, just a bit further down, we also have Shade Makers, a fabulous addition to our business community, and we have Snazzy Boutique. Uh, the fire station is on that street. there, So it's really becoming a corridor. Um, I know that uh, the people at Shade Makers would like to call it the Garden District, and they would like to... to um, contribute to the beautification of Elm Street, and, and I appreciate that. And I think this is something that could be very good for the city. And I also want to recognize the entrepreneurship program. 
and everything that's been done at College and Elm. It's, uh, this is a fabulous addition to our community. Can I just add one? Mm -hmm. One thing that I think is also really great about this, if, if we think one of the things that the community has really lacked is incubator space for small business. Um, and in part, it's the nature of, a, we've had great redevelopment uptown, but then you have these cold, dark spaces that need to be re built. But other communities have these kind of first floor spaces that are adaptable for small scale kind of stuff. And so I think, I think about Snazzy Boutique and the, the kind of local retail that we can have in a, in a that, that would, so I think there's a lot of possibilities within the framework of adaptive reuse. Um, so I'm excited to see what And, and because there. we own it, the rents won't be as high <laughs> as they are on High Street. People have talked about everything that Hamilton's doing, but commercial space in Hamilton is less than half the cost of what commercial space on High Street is. So I think this is uh, a, a positive step. Okay, thank you very much. And we'll move to second readings and you can read the first one. An ordinance by Oxford City Council authorizing the city manager to take all action necessary, including but not limited to the negotiation and execution of a contract to purchase real estate located at 603 and 607 West Chestnut Street, which property is approximately 2.316 or 2.316 acres at a cost of $318,000 for both parcels and utilize American Rescue Plan Act funds in making the purchase. Okay, is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Thank you very much. Jessica? I have changes? no new information from last time unless you'd like me to show pictures or answer questions. I'm here if you need me to. I think most of us know what this is about. Nothing's changed. Okay, is there anyone from the public who would like to address this ordinance? Shaven, Heather Ridge Court. I uh, just want to say thank you to city staff and to council for not only doing the kinds of things that we just talked about regarding the property down the street from College and Elm, but also doing things to help increase our affordable housing in this community. It is uh, obviously a very challenging place, especially for affordable rental housing for families. And um, with all the challenges our community is facing, I appreciate that this step is being taken. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Anyone else wish to address this ordinance? Okay. Counselors? Any commentary beyond I, what we've had already? Yeah, I guess I would just say that this is just another, this is a these, this is a really big step for the city of Oxford. It I is. mean, for, for many years in Oxford, we've been talking about how important housing was, how important affordable housing was. But functionally, the city's was kind of a less safe strategy. We didn't really have a strategy to make meaningful difference in, right. in our housing market. And we've been slowly learning how um, and, and, and getting better and better. But the idea that we're actually investing dollars in something, it, it, it's a new kind of venture for us to enter into this. Um, and I think it's, the, it, it, it's bold for the city of Oxford. And, and I'm really excited. Um, I, I would also say that this is one of these times which I'm often complaining about governments higher than us and I won't talk about the Ohio legislature, but Congress provided us with a lot of money, um, which, which, is an, which, is an op, which is a historic opportunity. And they had kind of strings attached, but one of those strings is like you're supposed to be transformative, right? And so w w with the American Rescue Funds, this is gonna be a transformative investment in the city of Oxford. So um, thanks to Congress. Thanks to city staff for stretching to think about how we can be more, made a more meaningful involvement in our local housing market and promoting affordable housing. So this is big. Thanks, Dave. Anyone else? Yeah, I think this, um, we talked last time about how this meets a central goal of council, which we determined uh, in addition to climate action is economic development and housing for everybody. And these are directly related to exactly those high priorities. And I thank staff for moving forward on it and looking for the opportunities and well done. If there's no more discussion, we can 
call the roll. Mr. Prothrich? Yes. Mr. Ellerby? Yes. Ms. Franklin? Yes. Mayor Snavely? Yes. Ordinance is adopted. We have an ordinance, oh, next ordinance you can read. <laughs> An ordinance amending ordinance number 3654, supplemental budget ordinance number 10, to make supplemental appropriations for fiscal year 2022. Okay, is there a motion to adopt? So moved. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded. Hi, Joe. Hi. Uh, <coughs> there's just one, <coughs> two adjustments that had to be made when we got our uh, second distribution of income tax from Rita. Uh, the general fund went to 840, 43, and the fire EMS fund uh, is greater and budgeted 129, 353, 23. Everything else is the same. Okay. Thank you. Would anyone from the public like to address this ordinance? <coughs> Hearing none, does council wish to address this ordinance? Please call the roll. Mr. Ellerby? Yes. Ms. Franklin? Yes. Mr. Prothers? Yes. Mayor Snavely? Yes. This ordinance is adopted. That moves us to announcements and communications. I'll go to City Manager Elliott. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just a couple quick things. Uh, first, an update on the Oxford Cemetery. Uh, as you know, at our last council meeting, uh, council adopted an ordinance accepting and taking title to the Oxford Cemetery upon the dissolution of the Oxford Cemetery Association and declaring an emergency. Following week, uh, Chris Allison, who's president of the Cemetery Association, signed the deed for the cemetery, which was recorded on December 16th, 2022. We also signed the management agreement uh, and have also completed the cemetery registration form, which uh, must be filed with the Ohio Department of Commerce, Division of Real Estate and Professional Licensing, along with other required information. Uh, the city will take over the management and operation of the Oxford Cemetery on January 1st, 2023. Also, uh, another meeting uh, this evening, uh, the Municipal Records Commission met. Uh, we held a meeting at the, the municipal building and we approved uh, several documents, uh, one being a uh, RC1, which is a one-time disposal of obsolete records for the police division. And then we also approved several certificates of records disposal, which is RC3. These are forms that the state provides us. Uh, also at that meeting, we reviewed an updated uh, policy, uh, amended records retention policy, and we will probably adopt that at our meeting in 2023. So lots going on uh, with the Municipal Records Commission. And that was completed by uh, Jessica Green and Heather, along with some uh, uh, part-time student staff and as well as uh, department sending representatives. So it's a big endeavor uh, and we're really pleased with the work they've done on that. So as I said earlier, we'll probably at our uh, first meeting in 2023 uh, adopt the amended records retention policy. And the last thing that I just want to share with you and uh, someone earlier mentioned they didn't want to comment on the Ohio legislature but I will <laughs> <laughs> they've done it again uh, and you probably noted in the Ohio Municipal League bulletin that we get weekly uh, that they were hearing a, a bill that was adopted by the house uh, this was house bill 513 uh, and then it went on to the Senate and all of a sudden mysteriously uh, they put in some regulations that prohibits uh, our local regulations uh, if we had some of tobacco products and alter alternative nicotine, nicotine products. Basically, they're preempting us in this area. And of course, the Municipal League is opposed to it as well as uh, many, many municipalities. And, and you know, it just bothers me that this bill started over about a year ago this provision was not in there and it didn't get in there. This provision did not uh, enter into that bill until it got to the Senate. And of course the Senate, uh, it was referred to them on November 15th, which of course was after the election. So we're talking about a lame duck uh, legislature. And then they basically uh, concurred with the Senate amendments on December 14th. So it's on the governor's desk for signature 
and the municipal league has sent a letter uh, urging the governor to uh, veto this bill because we're uh, opposed to the amendment. So I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. And the reason why I say we can't hear the bill again is because you know they continue to preempt us, and you know I feel strongly that, uh, and and this is pointed out in the. Uh, letter that the municipal league uh, sent to Governor DeWine that, uh, you know, at the local level uh, is where things get done. You know, we're closest to the people and, and we listen to them and I think we should have the ability to pass legislation that affects our communities. And of course, as we know, these nicotine flavored tobacco products, uh, there's a lot of nationwide concern about its effect on teenagers and, and hooking them onto uh, uh, tobacco and, and related products. So I just wanted to bring that up because, uh, you know, uh, right before the holiday season, uh, they passed this and sent it on to the governor's office. So I think we can uh, agree that we strongly urge uh, Governor DeWine to, to veto this bill. It originally started out with dealing allowing a wholesaler or distributor to obtain a refund of excise taxes on cigarettes, other tobacco products, and nicotine vapor products remitted on bad debts arising from the sales of those products. I'm not going to talk much about that because it's very detailed, and it's similar to what other states have adopted, but it's not similar with the provision that preempts us with local regulations. So that's all I have this evening. Thank you, Your Honor. Can I just ask a question uh, for the city manager and also my uh, law director, which is it seems like they're con constitutional issues. I mean, like to preempt a locality from from <coughs> doing zoning, uh, what, you know, when are the cities going to sue the, can we sue the legislature? Because I just, I think it's getting crazy. We, we can. I mean, basically, we'll need to talk more about that if, if we want to be a party to that, but you know, it was pointed out in the letter that the executive director of the Municipal League sent is that, you know, the Legislative Service Commission mentions in here that this might be uh, susceptible to a challenge, you know, due to the Home Rule uh, Amendment in the Ohio Constitution. But I do note in the bill, and once again, I just read that this evening, that there's a provision in here that if if we do something that runs contrary to the provisions of this bill and we get sued the, uh, and we lose, we have to pay not only our attorney fees, but their attorney fees. So it's like, you know, what's the message they're sending? And it's like, you know, whose side are the legislatures it's very on? very heavy handed. Yeah. Uh, you know. Well, I know that the Coalition for a Healthy Community uh, in Oxford is very much opposed to their action and supportive of our action in researching and looking at how these things might be licensed and regulated. Yeah. You know, and I read the proponent testimony. Uh, one was by the Ohio Chamber of Commerce, and the other one was by the Ohio Wholesale Marketers Association, and neither of them mentioned this provision that was added that they were in support of it, but, you know, obviously... Uh, someone was pushing it, and it, it got put in there without any Much debate. discussion, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. Michael? Nothing tonight, thank you. Chief? Nothing further tonight. Joe? Happy holidays. Chief? Okay. Sam? Okay. Jessica? I do believe it has been decided that we will have our 2023 council work session goal setting retreat on Friday, January 20th from noon till 4 p.m. So we'll send out a formal invite over email, but I want to let people know that at that meeting, we will review our 2022 progress toward our goals. We'll um, share and establish our 2023 goals based on your feedback from 22, if you guys remember, right? And with our new comp plan, which we hope will be adopted, and by the end of January, we will start the foundation and start planning for our action steps in 23. So, um, and beyond, really. So it's a pretty exciting time. Um, I do want to also give an update that um, very, it's, it's important, but we are transitioning from Granicus, for those of you who watch our meetings and minutes online on the Granicus tool, we will be transitioning from Granicus to the Civic Plus Civic Clerk tool by February is our goal. 
And so we are working right now on transferring 14 years of data from Granicus into Civic Plus. To say it's behemoth is minor. We keep blowing up the um, OCR reader, but we will figure it out. And um, but anyway, just know that that transition is coming and we'll keep everybody posted. We'll make announcements, but this is our first you know, big announcement. And then finally, congratulations to all the staff who celebrated the service awards um, at our employee luncheon. Thank you to everyone who attended. Um, it was a really great event. Great to be back in person and happy holidays. Thank you. Heather? Nothing, thank you. Okay. Nothing tonight, thank you. Okay. Uh, I'd also like to reiterate the happy holidays for everybody out there, but I want to also add there are a lot of individuals out there that have gone through some very tough times in the past couple of years, and the holidays tend to take a stronger toll on a lot of people. Uh, so if you have the ability, reach out to your people that you might be a little worried about. It could be the difference between them having a very bad holiday and a very good holiday. Yeah, a couple of things. Um, back to the state legislature, House Bill 458, it's... Um, an overhaul of election and voting laws in Ohio, currently sitting on uh, Governor DeWine's desk. Um, it would require photo ID, reduce the grace period for absentee ballots that um, will negatively affect people for slow mail. Um, it would make it harder for active duty military. Uh, it limits drop boxes to one per county at the board, prohibits the use of um, it, military ID for voting. Uh, so uh, there's still time, I believe, to contact the governor if you don't uh, approve of these measures. Uh, and it's important for them to hear from us. So lots of reasons to contact the governor. Um, I want to wish everyone season's greetings, whether you celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa. Happy holidays to you. I really enjoyed the time spent at the uh, staff service award luncheon. It was wonderful meeting uh, some of the hardworking staff and playing some games with them, getting to know them. Um, and also on December 9th, we had an art reception at the municipal building and it was in conjunction with Second Friday at OCAC. People came out and um, saw art in the municipal building and at OCAC. It was great to see the traffic flow between the two buildings and I really want to thank uh, Jessica and Heather Eli, who's our um, student assistant for PACO, and Ashley, who was there as well, and all the members of PACO. Looking forward to some more great public art in 2023. And also, thank you to everyone who submitted art for the call for art this year. There were lots of submissions, and congratulations to the people who won and whose art is on the wall in the municipal building. So if you have time to visit the municipal building during regular office hours, and look at the art that's there, I think you'll enjoy it. Okay. David? All right, yeah, I could, I could talk about the Ohio legislature, but I'll, I'll focus on positive topics, um, which is, and I don't want to steal anybody else's thunder, uh, thunder but um, it, this is the last meeting of the year. We're already thinking about 2023, and we've very, been very, very forward-looking in the city of Oxford and moving forward fast. But if you think about a year ago this time, when we were talking about potentially mask mandates again, and uh, 2022, was a long year and we got a lot done. So I want to uh, extend my uh, gratitude, obviously, to, to staff, the city administration and all staff, um, which we, we do a lot of thanking and they deserve it. Um, I've been really appreciative lately when thinking about the, the difficult conversations the school board is having that we don't have to have those conversations um, uh, from a budgetary point of view. Um, you know, I do also want to thank the city employees um, who work in so many different fields to keep our city um, going. I also really would like to thank our boards and commissioners. Often, like, they serve and don't get a lot of thanks. Um, and so I think that, like, those people who show up monthly, purely voluntary to help us in the environment or art or variances or anything else, it's really great. Um, but I also really appreciate um, members of the public. Uh, a lot of people have come and spoken to us over the last year and shared their thoughts and passions here in this meeting, um, but also the comprehensive plan process engaged a lot of people. Oxford is a really, really, really engaged place, and, and people really care, you know, so I really, it, 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 they entrust us um, to, to try to, and 
So anyway, and then also the idea of, of uh, our partners, because so many things that we do couldn't happen without the hospital or TOPS or, or whatever. All those people were adjacent to us and just expressed my gratitude to my fellow counselors because I could serve on a council. We could also run a council that would be much more different or more acrimonious or divided, and, and it's really nice to serve with people who share the same values and are well, really nice too. So <laughs> happy holidays. Um. I guess in my uh, comments tonight, um, I recognize and support my colleagues' comments. I want to uh, wish everyone happy holidays. Um, if you're going by Kroger sometime between now and Christmas, I hope you'll stop and maybe stick a dollar or more into the bucket that is out front with people mainly from Kiwanis Club who are ringing bells. And uh, that money goes to the Family Resource Center and for people who really need it and who, who are hurting this time of year. And so I encourage you to do so, especially between one and two on Friday, you can talk to your own mayor and uh, as you put money in the bucket. I'm not saying it's the cost for talking to the mayor, but I am. <laughs> suggesting that would be a great time and it'll keep me moving on a very cold day. Um, I want to wish everyone a happy Hanukkah. I was glad to see the menorah display. Um, it is something celebrated in my family. Um, Merry Christmas to everyone who celebrates Christmas. That's also celebrated in my family. Uh, happy Kwanzaa. Everything that, uh, that people celebrate this time of year and because we will not be meeting until 2023, I wish you all a very happy new year. With all that said, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. It's a wrap.